Let's consider the velocity trend for fluid in a venturi meter with a changing diameter. We're going to derive the velocity in the venturi using the principle of mass conservation, or continuity. From basic principles, we know that mass cannot be created or destroyed. We also know that for a steady state process, there is no accumulation of mass in the system over time. Applying these principles to water flowing in a venturi, we can say that the mass flow rate at any two points in the venturi must be equal. Next, let's determine how to relate the mass flow rate to the fluid velocity. For an incompressible fluid, or a fluid whose density is not a function of pressure, such as water, we can easily relate the mass flow rate to the volumetric flow rate by simply dividing the mass flow rate by the density. From this relationship, we can also see that the volumetric flow rate of an incompressible fluid must be constant through the venturi. Finally, we must relate the volumetric flow rate to velocity. We can say that the volumetric flow rate is equal to the area of flow multiplied by the average fluid velocity, V bar. For the venturi, the circular cross-sectional area is calculated using the inside diameter of the venturi at a point along the length. Using this definition of volumetric flow rate, let's consider how the velocity changes from the inlet to the throat of the venturi. We'll begin by setting the volumetric flow rate at the inlet equal to the volumetric flow rate at the throat since mass must be conserved. Next, we can substitute the definition of the flow rate in terms of velocity and area and cancel out the constants to create a relationship between the diameter and the velocity. Here, the velocity increases proportionally to the square of the inverse diameter ratio. Due to this squared relationship and the decreasing diameter from the inlet to the throat, we can see that the velocity must be much higher at the throat than at the inlet. We can use a similar approach to relate the fluid velocity at the inlet and the outlet of the venturi. Since the diameter of the venturi, and therefore the cross-sectional area, is equal at the inlet and the outlet, we know that the velocity at these two points must also be equal.